What's going on y'all, JT here back again with another video and today we're going to be doing another budget video for the game. Or as you can see, things are starting to come along a little bit more piece by piece, you know, uh, we're balling on a budget here so everything can't come together all in one in one giant $20,000 game room setup video. But I will try and update you guys with a game room office setup tour of what I have so far once I get things a little more cleaned up. But I think I'm in a good base right now to start with. Uh, today's video we're going to be talking about the TV that I picked up for the game room, which I wanted a TV in here, mostly for console gaming, casual gaming, my wife likes to play like Nintendo Switch, just to have another option for gaming on a TV so I don't have to sit at the desk all the time, I can sit back on the couch, relax, play something really casual. So this model here is the TCL 55 inch QLED 4K TV, but it can also run 4K at 60 hertz, which is big. Because if you're playing like a like a Forza or an NCAA 2K, kind of the games that I like to play casually, I can run that higher quality and get a great picture at 60 hertz, which I don't need the frame rate to be maxed out at 120 on my next gen console for those kind of games because it's just more casual. It's not competitive. It's not like a Call of Duty or any of these other console games that require a high refresh rate in order for you to play the best quality game that you can. So this was a refurbished model that I got from Best Buy. It was under the excellent category for its condition. So if you go on their website, they have the option for you to look through their products, especially refurbished ones, and then you can go from there and look at categories. I think it's gonna be excellent, good, and okay. I went for the excellent option. I just didn't wanna take the risk of something being wrong with it. I noticed the only problem that I had, which is very minor, is there's a small, small dark spot in the bottom corner of the TV. Not really noticeable. You can only notice it if you're really looking for it. So that's the only issue I've had with the TV so far. Other than that, everything has worked perfectly fine. So I have no issues with the refurbished uh, Geek Squad model that was there. And for $150, you kind of can't beat it. I mean, even if there was a couple things wrong with it, it's one of those things that this is such a budget TV for any space really. If you're looking for a game room TV that's not your main gaming setup, then this is definitely a steal for you. So some of the big things that I was watching out for with a TV at this price point is just how the color looked, how the picture looked, how that 4K quality looked, and whether or not it worked in different lighting settings. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to really test it out in like a bright sunny day. I do have blinds up, so that does help, but I haven't really gotten to test the glare. It doesn't seem too bad when I have all the lights on. It's a, during the day right now, but it's been raining. But at nighttime, the picture is great. The brightness is great, especially when you're running at the 4K setting. Uh, the gaming setting, they do have a gaming mode that you can change this TV to. With that mode, it does dim down the screen a little bit so you can get better gaming quality. Personally, it's up to you, all personal preference. I don't use the mode necessarily because I found no reason to. The games that I'm playing casually anywhere on this TV seem to work just fine in its regular condition, regular mode, straight out of the box. I added a couple settings of course just to make sure that the TV was at its peak function. Now with that being said, all the colors that I've noticed have been great. It's like I said, I'm not nitpicking. Most of my heavy and competitive gaming is done at my desk setup anywhere where I have a monitor that is built for PC gaming to game at the highest level. So this was more for really, really low level casual gaming for the wife to come play some Switch, for me to kick back, play a couple console games. I wasn't looking for anything crazy and for the price point, I'm not being too nitpicky. This isn't a $3,000 8K OLED TV, which don't get me wrong, they're beautiful if you've seen them in stores, you can tell there is a reason why that price point is there. But to be honest with you, for $150, I promise you the difference isn't going to be astronomical if you're not looking for something that intense. You cannot beat the price point if you don't have the money to drop on an OLED TV. Now if you do and money's not an option, go ahead and get yourself the OLED. It's beautiful, you're not gonna regret it. But if you're balling on a budget, you're looking for something that you can get for cheap, I definitely recommend this TV. Now onto some of the negatives I've only noticed with like maybe a few movies and if I'm watching like YouTube TV, things of that nature. Sometimes you can tell the drop in quality is there, but it's not too noticeable. Like I said, if you're in here hanging out, you got something on the TV just to watch casually, you won't notice any issues. I watched some of the Olympic games in here. It looked great, it looked fine. It's not gonna be up to the crazy standards, like I said, of an OLED TV, but that's fine. The biggest downfall to this, just like any TV nowadays, is going to be the sound quality. The sound quality of this TV is terrible. I'm not gonna lie, it's terrible. You're gonna need a sound bar if you do wanna get this, but it's, it is bearable.
but that again goes for any TV even the most expensive TVs nowadays the smaller the smaller these TVs are getting the more they're focusing on the quality and picture the sound is continuing to suffer so no matter what TV you get no matter what price point you get you're going to need a sound bar anyway so that's not something that I found as too big of a negative because no matter what TV I got a sound bar was probably going to be needed that's just the way it is nowadays and there's really no avoiding it so don't buy this TV expecting movie quality sound bass booming gaming it's just not gonna happen it never was gonna happen anyway but at $150 again the picture quality is there it works in both dark and light situations the brightness is actually crazy for what I paid for this I wasn't expecting the brightness to be as bright as this is but it, it's been doing the job. It's been working really well. I've had fun gaming on it. I haven't noticed any real hiccups with the gaming. Now with the UI, this is a Google TV, so this isn't going to be as simple as a Roku TV, which in my opinion is one of the most basic, simple, easy to understand UIs that TVs offer is Roku. I do like their, their system. It's really simple to understand. Google's not really complicated either. There is more to the UI, but I don't think anybody will have any troubles figuring it out with a little reading through the tutorials and it walks you through most of the settings anyway. So just play around with the TV a little bit. You won't have too many issues with Google TV. I've heard people in the past not having issues with it. They've used it, they've loved it. So don't expect too much trouble using the TV because Google is really not too complicated to use. And another feature that I do like with this is that the remote has a talk function. So if you need to find a show or you're looking for something, you can speak into the remote and find it. It's much easier that way than having to type out on a remote. We all know how annoying that is. I do like that there is a talk to search feature on this TV. So all in all, if you're looking for a really good budget TV setup, I do recommend going with this option. If you can find it refurbished, if you can find any TV refurbished, especially at Best Buy, uh, they do a really good job with quality control at least in my experience with the few products that I have gotten refurbished. They do a good job at placing the products under the correct condition, whether it's excellent, good, or okay, and you know what you're getting into with it. So if you're gonna go on the lower end, do expect some problems. It's almost inevitable if you're, if you're going there, but you can find them for even cheaper than this if you do go with the lower options and take the risk. It's a really low risk, high reward considering the price point, but I just went with the excellent. $150, I think this is a great TV, especially a starter TV if you're trying to get a game room started and you don't want to ball out on, you know, like I said, the three to $5,000 4 8K OLED TV. It's just not in the cards right now and that's fine. So you can go ahead and get something like this. It will get the job done. It looks great. Gaming on it so far has been a great experience. I've noticed no issues that I haven't with any other TV that I've gamed on. And like I said, if you do have a main gaming setup that you game with a PC on a monitor and you just need something extra for your console and you don't want to spend too much money, this is definitely a great option for you. Thank you guys again for tuning in for another one of these budgets. Let me know what you think about the budget setups. Uh, I'm balling on a budget, so I'm gonna keep these coming with all these great finds that I do come across so I can help you put together your dream room as well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It really means a lot to me. It's free. Until next time.